Tan chi potete conoscere il programma al caso. Mi ti invitavo a arrivare un tema interessante. Ma sopra, pa, al caso sicuro, non ho un gran piacere di avere un invitato nombrando un di sue qualità, in primo luogo è un turista che ha vinto per più di 35 anni venendo a Aruba tour Aia. È molto interessante, con un po' scuccia, eh, fuori di ottica di un visitante a Sina Largo, eh, non si può parlare di desarrollo che non si conosce anche nella nostra isla. Però lo che sta si è ancora più interessante, sta realmente mi ha invitato da una persona che è un psichiatra, è una persona di nazionalità argentina e sempre desea di tornare al suo paese dopo di poter alcanzare la sua professione, il suo studio non è necessario, ma sin embargo ancora sta pensando se è vero che va in Argentina sì o no, dopo di 64 anni vivendo in America. Kiko Tahasi mi ha invitato a Sina Special, in primo luogo non sto a e buchi, so sto trattando un tema di un buchi molto interessante, non sto a che arriva a posto grande qui. Il tema di buchi è di unintentional immigrant. Non sto a Sina tanto immigrante in Argentina, però non sto a parlare di un immigrante, non sto a sua intenzione per i migranti, però la cosa non va a dire di un tema, e non stavo a cominciare il tema, in maniera mai vista, tinha sino tanto tema con non stavo a papia con il dottor Jorge Di Napoli. In primo luogo, il eh, dottor Di Napoli ha vinto a conoscere e a vivere l'epoca di Evita Perón in Argentina. È un tempo che ha dato plasmato in storia, per lo che è evento, non è ancora gente che va a back. E mira, arriva, non arriva un sistema di governo e principalmente rondi un figura sin a grande in maniera evita per un mi invitato a bai scol cu che Guevara e non è stato bene interessante chissà sta bene interessante pavo e non sta bai cominciare il programma eh, dottor di Napoli dottor Jorge ti do una preferenza per il programma guardo conduci già un po' adilanti in inglese Dr. Jorge Di Napoli, I would like uh, to thank you for to be in the program in El Caso well, today. Thank you very much, Jorge. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to appear in your program. Uh, I want to thank you also to, to, to be a big sponsor of our island for 35 years, visiting our island, being a resident for a period of time, and I'm sure you have seen the progress and you have seen the changes that the island has gone through. But before we yes, go sir. to that, I would like to leave that for the end of the program. Okay. You said that you went to school with Che Guevara. Che, che Guevara is such a romantic figure, but behind the scene, Che Guevara was a very strong uh, political, uh, I mean, had, had this communist ambitions, yes. wanted to change the world. Get us, get us to know from your personal view a bit more of this character that we know today as Che Guevara. Che Guevara and myself, we were both attending the uh, medical school at the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. He was uh, two years ahead of me. But we knew him because he was an activist and he was through campus uh, giving out uh, pamphlets, uh, flyers, uh, promoting communism, and uh, he, of course he didn't have many takers because Argentina is mainly a very Catholic country and mm -hmm. very democratic in those days. Uh, he was preaching uh, in the wrong place, Jorge. He, he was, Back, yeah, that he time. was driving yeah, So he decided to leave uh, medical school and go out in, uh, with a friend on a motorcycle ride through the South American countries. And there is a movie uh, to that respect called The Motorcycle Diaries. Mm -hmm. uh, he spent about a year traveling through South, throughout South America. When he came back, of course, he was a year behind and I was a year ahead. So 
we were attending similar courses mm -hmm. and we could sit down and face to face have debates about his political views and mine and uh, of course he was very strong for communism and I was a conservative very strong for a democratic government. But as you said Jorge, Argentina being uh, mostly uh, Catholic, Catholic and yes. there was no room for communism. No, well, where no. did he get this influence? I know back then, like nowadays you have social media, you can flip the world in a dime from one day to the other. We just look at the, we just look at the yeah. situation in Iran at the moment, the, the world is upside down. But back then, it was much more difficult. How, where did he get his influence? Uh, where do you think? In, in our debate, he came up that he was a good reader. And he used to read all kind of book about uh, Marx and uh, mm. all the communist leaders. And uh, he associated himself with their ideas. And uh, oh, we used to have very heated debates about it. Uh, so was he part of a movement back then? In no, he, he was, was just more of a solitary guy. Oh, wow. He was doing it mostly by himself. And uh, when, the, uh, when he finished medical school a year ahead of me, he left the country. And when again, traveling through all the other countries, uh, promoting communism and, you know, eventually, he met uh, Fidel Castro in Mexico in mm -hmm. 1954, and he joined, joined the Revolutionary yes, Army yes. at that time. But still, I would like to stay um, um, at the time when you were both of, both of you were students. Yes, because you met this celebrity, if we can call him this way. You met him before he went on this trip that made a yes. big change in his life. Correct. Did you yes. know that change? Because you know him before and after, after the ride. What, what, what would you say was, well, he was the very, main points that changed him? Okay, uh, he was very enthusiastic because he had found in some of the other American countries followers okay. that agreed with his ideas. Which he was not getting in Argentina. Which he, <laughs> no, in Argentina right. nobody was following him. Right. And that's why he left twice okay you know indeed so. when you look at him Jorge when you look at uh, at the Che Guevara knowing knowing him on a personal level uh, knowing his struggle with his beliefs and with his creed and then after becoming this big figure in communism what, what is your opinion about him what do you think about the progress of this man well, I think he was a true believer in his ideas and wanted to influence other countries. And the fact is that when uh, Castro invaded Cuba, uh, I think, I'm not sure, uh, because I didn't research that aspect, but I think uh, Fidel Castro named him Minister of Finances. Mm -hmm. So he could have a very good life in Cuba. But no, he preferred to leave Cuba and go around all the countries again until he was arrested in Bolivia and killed there. The, the story, I mean, part of the backstory says that uh, he was, I mean, his, his killing was organized by Fidel Castro himself. That, that after is meeting one of the rumors. He, yes, after meeting Fidel Castro, he was very much influenced by mm. Uh, Castro's beliefs. Yes. yes. We, we would like to go like this book. It's The Unintentional Immigrant. Yes. We have a lot of immigrants here at Aruba, and I'm sure you you know that. You, uh, you can I'm see aware it, of that. I can, can see, see it in the street. I can see the difference yes. over the years. Yes. Now, you, you are saying here the, un, the unintentional immigrant. My first impression is that you was in a place that you really had other plans while being there. But then finally you, you stay. Yes. Uh, I, when I graduated from uh, medical school, I practiced surgery for mm -hmm. two years in Argentina. And then I decided to come here. So you became a surgeon in Argentina? In, Argen in and Argentina. It, and then you wanted well, to specialize. Well, it was a beginning uh, yeah. okay. 
surgeon. So, but I needed to improve my skills, mm -hmm. and I thought that uh, in those days, uh, the United States was the mecca. Was the mecca uh, to go, uh, right. To go. Right. So I came, and, uh, but before uh, coming to the country, I, I realized that I had to do a, a one year of rotating internship before mm -hmm. being able to apply for a surgery. Before to continue. To continue yes. surgery. And uh, in those days, we didn't have internet. There was no way of finding information. Uh, uh, so I wrote to a number of hospitals throughout the United States. And one of the hospitals uh, agreed to give me a contract to come right away in, mm -hmm. in a few weeks. So I was thrilled, you know, and I was coming to New York City. I had lived in Buenos Aires. In, you know, five million people city, city right. to a larger one. So I was a city boy. So coming to, a, 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 and that's to New a York City w was fantastic. What, what, did, you, did you feel that? I mean, yes, I having, have an Argentinian culture and then suddenly finding yourself in New York, did you, did you feel anything well, different uh, than what your country really was? Uh, yes, oh, you, had to no, oh, up, you had to pick up a lot of stuff really yeah. fast. Well, uh, I have to go through the struggle of learning a new language, mm -hmm. adapt to a different type of society. And uh, the hospital that had accepted me was Harlem Hospital. So in, Harlem, what year was this? This was you? in 1956. Wow. And th those, I, those were not the best times for Harlem those either. Was no. no. And uh, initially, I was surprised to find myself in that type of environment, but I had no choice, you know. Uh, so I stayed Those were the days from Nicky Cruz, you know, this yeah. big gangster that afterwards had, had yeah. these books written. True. And I mean, that's the area. Right. And so after I finished my internship and I applied to several places uh, to enter a surgical service, uh, they wouldn't accept me because, uh, number one, uh, my English wasn't that good. Yes, right. Uh, and second, because uh, I had done my internship in a hospital that in those days was kind of substandard. Yes, correct. You know, so uh, I decided to go back to Argentina. Okay. But I lacked the financial resources my parents couldn't help me financially. So through a friend of mine, I learned that the hospitals in Massachusetts, uh, state hospitals, psychiatric hospitals, uh, were looking for doctors to practice there, and they were paying very good salary. So this was my opportunity to gather a little fund to be able to pay for my trip back to Argentina, set up a small practice, and uh, while working there, I met this young uh, pretty nurse, and uh, we liked each other, and, and eventually she became my wife. I have to ask and you this, And that changed Jorge. my whole <laughs> master <laughs> plan. <laughs> Jorge, I have to ask you this, because I know yeah. most of the Argentinians, they're not really fond of the Americans. You know, in their culture, they're not really fond of America, but still, you choose to be there. What makes that difference? Uh, well, uh, the, the, the main reason was because to Ar Argentina, specialize in uh, uh, Argentinians, uh, the Argentina in those, year, in those years mm -hmm. was in the top five in the world. I mean, yes, we, we can still country, see the yeah. French influence in yeah. all the buildings. Well, America was not on a the map there back then. My, the, the, my, the lady who became my wife was of... Uh, French Canadian extraction. Okay. So she was more on the Latin, mm -hmm. Latino side yes, than right. the American side, even so she had been born in Massachusetts. So there was certain affinity there. We understood each other quite well. But then uh, the, the, the intention to be an immigrant there stopped. Then, then you there became a citizen. I, well, I became a citizen. Well, I married her. And uh, we have two children, two boys at that time. And I decided to 
follow psychiatry as my career. Mm -hmm. So I, we moved to New York State to uh, the Middletown uh, Psychiatric Center associated with Columbia University. So I, I was taking courses at Columbia University, the Vanderbilt Clinic at the uh, Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I enjoy psychiatry. I became very enthusiastic and I love it. I practice it before. How can you make a resume of your, of your career? What, what was, I mean, you love your career, but explain at least what, what were the most touching things during all these years that you can look back and say, I love my career. Well, I was always a, a type of social guy. Mm. So I like to talk to people and understand uh, their behavior, their emotions, and probably that led me to enjoy my practice. Okay. And so. uh, what about the personal, on a personal level? I mean, on, with patients, I mean... On a personal you, level, yeah. I, I was able to uh, relate very well to them. Mm. And uh, I guess they like my approach, but because they continue coming to see me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, I, you know, became very well known in the community. I 50 did. years. 50 years, Jorge, that's a long time. Televidente, bo programa al caso, tratando tema, nos tin un invitado, manera bos por awak. En verdad, et in basta tempo arribe mundo aquí. E ti contento di poi anche di avere una buona salute. Il nostro paese tratta di una seguente parte, in verità, il motivo per chi ha scritto e buchi e chi ha contenuto la tratta. Se è mai, ora si vede. Non vedo. Mira qui. Vuoi mirare algo che vuoi compartire con la comunità? Una notizia positiva o una critica costruttiva? Manda noi per video o per trattare una notizia a telearuba.awi o whatsapp noi a 597 gestres 23. Tour material da work screen promete una work pública in anda queda anónimo. una bocasse sentido di frescura con solamente hierba artificial di JR Auto Center. No supplier responsabile di installare tour stadion olimpico in Beijing. E qualità è qualità ottenibile qui in Aruba offrecì pavo di JR Auto Center per i differenti tipi di hierba secondo le necessità di Cubotin. Duna bocasse e sentido di frescura con solamente hierba por Dunabo instala correctamente lo Dunabo años di buon servicio no sin instalación en doméstico como también instalación en comercial manera es un dembo pantalla voy hierba artificial tan a JR Auto Center siguiendo pues con el tema de la segunda parte del programa y aquí nana un de los buques aquí está el póster que nos toca aquí nana Está bajando un usuario interesante. Pero en verdad, Dr. Jorge Di Napoli está un conocedor de cultura suramericana, de lo que está viendo de Argentina, pero también está conocido, en el caso aquí, de cultura americana y de cultura caribense, ya que está para 35 años está viniendo a Aruba. Aparte de Aruba, viaja gente ronda el mundo, e non nos por wak, por ejemplo, de cover de buki aquí, nos por mira, el joven que está aquí nana, haciendo una tarea excepcional. Está precisamente en la Praga, en Europa. Nos está bien punto, doctor Jorge de Napoli, que aparte de estar un conocedor geopolítico y de información en clave, hace ah, un mes, arriba tarea, una escuela guardo apuntar, 
como agente secreto. Si nos tiempo ahí para nos ainda película de James Bond, estaba a tenificar algo así de grande. Well, Doctor Di Napoli aviva parte de su vida como un agente secreto, de cual narración de ese está de en buque que hay. Please explain me about uh, uh, please relate how to I us became involved about with all your travels around the world. Yeah. And uh, first, let's let's put that on the map. More or less, all the all the countries that you've gone, and then finally, while being a psychiatrist, becoming a secret agent for the Office of Strategic Information, which which was a very important organization back then. Mm. Explain let, to us. What okay, let me go back a few years. Okay. Uh, uh, a friend of mine, a lawyer in Boston, uh, decided to. Uh, run for U.S. representative mm. in Washington for the House of Representatives. And he called me and he asked me to be part of his campaign team. And I told him, I don't know that much about politics, but he said, well, you are a connoisseur, you are an expert in human behavior, and I need somebody who will accept as a psychiatrist. A, as a psychiatrist, yes. could be assess me in that particular mm. uh, department. So uh, we did run his campaign, and uh, the best we could, he was running as an independent. There was a, a Democrat and a Republican uh, also running for the same seat. And my friend, two weeks, w we made a few trips to Washington to meet with the uh, national committees, the Republicans, the Democrats, trying to learn how to really organize and run a campaign. Uh, about two weeks before the election, uh, the polls uh, showed that my friend had about 13% of the vote. And the Democrat and the uh, Republican had, were in the 40s. So, logically, he could decide where, who was going to win that Correct. seat. That's right. So, uh, they call us from the uh, Republican Committee, the Central Republican Committee, and discuss with us uh, the possibilities and, you know, and uh, then the, my friend made an agreement with him them to withdraw from the campaign and throw his support to the Republican candidate. Right. And the Republican candidate won, did win. Uh, and uh, a couple of years later, uh, this Republican got another, they gave him a job or subsecretary or something or other. Mm. And so he left the vacant the seat vacant mm -hmm. again. So the uh, National Republican Committee called him and wanted my friend to run as a Republican. And so they, this was going to be his second run? His second run, yeah. two years later. So Did you remain in the team? I mean, No, once the campaign was over, well, it was the dissolved. So, so the friendship the, remained. The friends, the, oh yeah, we continue being friends, yeah. seeing each other, going out with our wives. And, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he called me again. I say, oh, no again, not again. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, what did I you had think, enjoyed it. Why, why did you think that he made a call? I mean, uh, he didn't make he, it the first time. He didn't, he didn't get to make it the first time, but still he, he wanted to call you again. He, he obviously saw, saw well, something he, in you. Well, I guess he appreciated uh, how I had advised him mm -hmm. during the previous campaign okay. as far as how to deal with uh, organizing meetings, mm -hmm. how to mm -hmm. address people, uh, you know, try to gain their support, this right. type of thing. So now uh, you're back. That included all <laughs> part of the behavior. You're back in the team. So, so I'm back in how, the team. How, how do we get into the secret agent job? Okay. I'm getting there. <laughs> well, we, being part of the National Republican uh, Committee, we made frequent trips to Washington, D.C., and we became acquainted with a number 
of people yeah. in the administration. That's right. Well, the election came, and unfortunately, he lost again. So he decided, I said, I will continue Not being a again. corporate mm -hmm. lawyer, mm -hmm. ne never mind, forget politi mm -hmm. politics. So about two years later, I received this phone call for this person who identified as a member of the intelligent uh, the services. The Office of Strategic Information. The, right. the, the Office of Strategic Information uh, wanted to meet with me, that he was coming to a city near uh, where I was located in Massachusetts. And uh, at first, I thought it was a joke. Yeah. I said, let me hear him out. This, 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 <laughs> this doesn't make sense, but it was intriguing. So I said, I never run away from any challenge. Right. So I said, hey, let me go and see what happened. I went and I met this man by the name of Mike. Obviously, it was a code name. It right, wasn't his real name. And he explained to me uh, that during the Second World War, uh, there was this uh, Czechoslovakian living in Istanbul that came up with the idea of recruiting people who travel around the world uh, and because of their business, businessmen, entertainers, mm -hmm. uh, people in academia, professionals, mm -hmm. could travel without arising any suspicions. Right. And they could gather information that would be bene of benefit to the United States. That's right. So, uh, he asked me, he, he tried, uh, if I wanted to be recruited and be a member of this group. Of course, I didn't know any of the other people in the group. I just dealt with this particular, my contact person, Mike. So this was a group of persons that don't know each other. Right. <laughs> right. So <laughs> It's uh, part of the strategy. I, 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 I talked with him and I... I thought yeah, I was intrigued. Uh, I said, oh, this is something that I might like. So I said, well, let me think it over and I will talk it over with my wife. You know, to, mm. I said, oh, no, 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 no. You cannot tell your wife Anybody. anything. Yeah, right. I said, why not? We've been married for a number of years. You know, we had four children at that time. Uh, he said, women have their friends, they talk, sometimes a little bit too much, they disclose too much information, mm -hmm. and most important, you never know how a marriage is going to end up. Mm -hmm. That's it. Which makes sense. So I said, after a few weeks, I called him back, and I told him, okay, I will do it. Wow. So they brought me to Washington, they taught me a few different techniques of how to be, uh, you talk a, a, a secret service. Uh, you know, actually, we, uh, there, there are many classifications. We were mm -hmm. in the classification of undercover operatives. Mm -hmm. right. That was our title, let's say. And uh, so uh, every so often, uh, he knew that uh, I was going to a conference somewhere in Europe, and uh, <coughs> then he would come to me and Give me a, so they so adapted the, the this the, the the secret work adapted to your normal schedule. Yes, Everything and, and many times they yeah. they made suggestion also. Yeah. Uh, go on a tour uh, to Germany or to France, and you know we need this type of information mm -hmm. from such and such place. Of course, in the book I cannot disclose what the information was. The information. I never knew what was classified or not. So I assumed that everything was classified. So that I couldn't say a word about anything. How many missions this book encloses? Oof, uh, I did it for 20 years. So it was, I described there a couple of them, which mm -hmm. were probably the most interesting ones. Right. But I had many, uh, Describe, describe to us and, and most, this was a few a, of the most a, interesting a, ones. A, a vo a well, uh, one of them was, uh, I don't know, if I tell you, nobody would buy the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> but I can tell you that uh, some of them were a little bit uh, kind of sticky. Not really dangerous, but pretty close to it. And the, you know? how, how, how easy did you get access to the information required? During this well, work, the, the, you, I, during the operation that you had to go back to them when, when I, and report, okay, when, and then you would get special instructions yes. to continue? I, I'll get the special instructions here, and then at the other end, I will meet my co another contact, person, contact person who will, was somebody See? local who could guide me how to go about collecting this information. Did you find yourself meeting people unintentionally? I mean, the, you wasn't programmed to meet these persons and you did that just for this work? Uh, Can I, I ask? Did you, met, did you met persons that you were not intended to meet, but in, in the mission it requires for it, you to Oh, yes. Something? It required that I should meet. With you have to meet this guy. Yes. I had to meet a certain person who already knew me. Probably he knew a description because... The, the minute I got there, they would approach me mm -hmm. and say, you know, and it was a code phrase. Well, I'm, phrase. I'm, refer I'm referring to the source, to people that, ha to, that are the source of the information that you were looking for. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it was just business was How no many relation. countries can we say that are being uh, secretly investigated or where well, information is being let collected? Me tell you, can, can, uh, we talk, can we say the when, whole world? Or? When I wrote the book and we were editing the book, uh, uh, the person who was doing the editing uh, asked me, how many countries have you been in? And I said, I don't know. And we started counting how many. And <laughs> I've been in more than 40 countries, wow. about 45 countries, South America and Europe. So I can assume holding this book in my hand that for 35 visiting Aruba, it wasn't really only tourism. Well, <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of my assignments was uh, to me to come to Aruba. They knew I came here every year, twice a year, uh, to meet, uh, go to the hospital and somehow meet this uh, Dr. Jaime Falcone. Is he so he was being a suspect back then? Yes. We, 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 we. So uh, <laughs> the, the funny part of it is that I had already met Jaime, and we were very good friends. Yeah, and then you had to but investigate him. <laughs> the, no, I didn't come to investigate him, but he was the gate to the governor's mansion. Right. Because he had Related, the, he was the related contacts. to the wife. His contacts, yeah, uh, paved the way for you to go there. And I had asked, uh, access to the uh, house there at the time. Was a question of uh, a dealing with a petroleum being produced by Venezuela and the refinery, global refinery here in Aruba. And so. I gathered that information. Of course, I didn't tell Jaime anything. Yeah, yeah, he didn't he know did, that. He, he didn't know that anything knowing. about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but they knew of him over there. Did you ever get in a situation where, where your secret uh, position was exposed? No. Or at least suspicion towards you? I mean, uh, you, you got in a position similar to that? Uh, not really. There was an incident when I was in Moscow. Uh, wow. My assignment was to go to the, uh, what they call the Victory mm -hmm. uh, Museum, and I was taking pictures of uh, a certain uh, objects, uh, objects yes. that they wanted uh, to know. And uh, this guard with a machine gun, you know, came and said, Came no pictures, yeah, you right. know, and uh, but you I'm know, sure I, I thought I, 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 this is <laughs> the end of <laughs> but, but my doc, doctor. I'm sure I'm <clears throat> sure being a secret agent, and whenever you say your last name is Di Napoli, automatically it removes you from any suspicion to have any links with the well, U.S. Uh, uh, I, I never knew there are many Italians. I never the knew why they uh, recruited me. Uh, what I believe, or why I think, is 
number one, uh, I speak uh, Spanish. Mm -hmm. I spoke English. And you know the cultures. I could communicate in French and in Italian. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I had already traveled to many parts in the world. And uh, also uh, that speaking English with an accent and with my physical appearance, tall, blonde, blue eyes, yeah. I could mix, I could be German, I could be Swedish. You, I you could can be, be anything you yeah. want. <laughs> and speaking broken English, uh, they right. would, wouldn't think it, that I was an American. It's, it's even better, yes, yeah. indeed. So that's my idea. Well, probably has I, something to do with it. Well, now that you explain that, I can understand why, for example, most of the Fortune 500 companies in the U.S., after so many years of pushing their American executives to work South America, they decided to stop that and use South Americans in to Asia. work South America. Uh -huh. In your case, you knew the American culture, you knew the South America, Central America, and the Caribbean culture. Yeah. So you would fit in. And I have friends right in. in Europe. I have friends in Munich because uh -huh. I used to give uh, uh, lectures at the University of uh, Munich. Uh, I had friends in Paris. Uh, so, how did you keep the secret with your wife? I mean, the intuition uh, from women. How did you manage when to do I that? When I wrote the first, you should write a book about that. Uh, well, <laughs> when, she, uh, uh, when I, I I wrote the first draft of the book, uh, I gave it to her to read it. Wow! And uh, I always have the feeling that she was aware that something was going on. That's the sixth sense, you, yeah. can, you can fight that. And because sometimes she made allowances for me mm -hmm. uh, to have free time to do what go you and do, do what I, I had to do, right. you know, right. so. Like a position that I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting, Jorge. Uh, the, on the last part of the, the program, I'm going to interview in Spanish. This time we're not right. Everybody, the book, is the book for sale on Aruba? Uh, uh, it's uh, on sale through Amazon. Okay, so anybody wants to read this interesting story, you can purchase this book through Amazon. And I'm sure we're going to get a glimpse of a secret agent in the life of a psychiatrist that wanted to live in, in Argentina and ended up being an unintentional immigrant in the U.S. Uh, wow. May I correct you about the secret agent? Oh, it's not. It's an undercover operative. Okay, okay, on the, <laughs> undercover. Let me write because that. Because a secret agent that's, has that, a different function. That's another job. That's another job. That's, that's killing deep, people, yeah. maybe. Right. Televidentes, va programa al caso tratando un tema que está mirando cada rato más interesante. Y el último parte no se va a hacer en español, ya que usted trata de un visitante que usted viene para 35 años. Cabo, en Aruba. Más y así. Y más, ahora no se va a hacer. Para buscar la diferencia entre un buen shock absorber y uno que ya agasta, es que tiene información fundamental para mantener el auto en buena condición. Ahora el shock absorber de buen auto gasta, está muy difícil para mantener el rime y el tire de una posición correcta y safe. La demostración siguiente te mostró un auto corrido a 40 km por hora pasando arriba un obstáculo de apenas 10 mm. Mesora el wheel de bo auto está bajo de control de forma que limitando bo una core y break bo auto de una forma safe. Corda siempre para check regularmente shocks de bo auto buscando leak de azeta o sushi acumular arriba en que lo indica la hora para cambiar bo shocks. JR Auto Center está ofrece shock absorber de marca en KYB y power de alta calidad para tu marca de auto. La prestan Hopi Solidario. Swanson es el importador más grande de productos naturales en América. Este importa para 90% para tu marca en Aruba. Ahora, nos tenemos más de marca Swanson en Aruba. Swanson es el producto de calidad que a mí no me va a una vez que me va a tener diferencia con otra marca. Nós oferecemos de Swanson e coconut oil, que especialmente para a gente que está a roupa. Também, para a gente não mais idade 60 para arriba, nós temos o PQQ e o Ubiquinol, que está um produto que está garantizado, que está bem back, mas não está um parinho aí passado. 
A kinamit ti tres produkto di Swanson, kami ino ko hindi nang kuting bida drug, bote hobby tension, hobby stress, mita ofrece ba tres produkto na aki te Ashwanda B Complex is St. John Church. Usa Swanson ilubori para i diferensa ku otro. Papa. Ma. Mi. Papa. Mami. Tire, tire, tire. Na JR Auto Center, kuwe mi ho pres na naruba. Passenger tires, low profile tires, truck tires, e mas. Na JR Auto Center. Vamos a seguir pues con un tema interesante, doctor Jorge Di Napoli, psiquiatra argentino de nacionalidad, a la escuela con Che Guevara, eh, que era la América para especializar y volver back a Argentina. También un inmigrante inintencional, finalmente está en su mes, está en su trabajo de undercover, arriba a nivel de información de otro país, más que 40 países. Y toda la información aquí está encerrada en el book aquí. Me quiero recomendar que voy a subir arriba a Amazon y voy a comprar el book aquí sin ningún problema arriba a Amazon. Pero no se va a seguir qué programa en español. Para sobre, no se quiere apuntar a Jorge, un tiki arriba a nuestro país, arriba a su óptica de desarrollo, que tiene así tanto años viniendo y visitando Aruba, y está parte de un gran grupo de turistas que nos ha sostenido, que está haciendo a ver quién no está. Jorge, seguimos en español y para mí realmente, bueno. nuevamente te debo agradecer, en verdad. De, para mí es un honor tener una persona que ha venido a nuestra isla por tanto tiempo, de manera consecutiva, porque el único pilar económico que tenemos aquí en Aruba es el turismo. Y tú has sido parte, tú has sido una parte muy fiel de lo que es esa, de esa industria. Y más que eso, tú conoces todos los cambios, has vivido todos los cambios que hemos tenido como, sí. como isla. ¿Cómo puedes tú resumir? Sabemos que realmente, si yo que tengo 64 años, a mí se me van las palabras, tú con tu edad, Estás tan sharp. Entonces, danos un poquito de, del recuento. Bueno, uh, uh, la primera vez que vinimos a Aruba fue en el año 85. Y vine con mi señora y los dos nos quedamos entusiasmados con Aruba. La gentileza de la gente de los arubianos. Uh, la, uh, era como la amistad que ofrecían. Uh, era real, ¿no? Era, era real. real. Cuando uno era, va para Disney, uno ve algo, montaje, que la gente está haciendo su trabajo. Su, su trabajo, pero también son muy respetuosos, sí. muy, a, muy a, acomodan a uno de la mejor manera posible. Como buen anfitrión. Uh, como, sí. sí. Uh, y entonces, cuando... La próxima vez que vacación decidimos uh, volver a Rúa. Uh, y esa segunda vez que volvimos fue cuando lo conocí a Jaime Falcone. Correcto. Fui al hospital, al, 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 a la mesa de entrada, y pregunté, ¿tiene un psiquiatra? ¿Hay algún psiquiatra acá en el hospital? Me dijeron, no, pero hay un, neuro, un neurólogo, el doctor Falcone, que practica psiquiatría también. Y entonces dijo, bueno, podría llamarlo, así puedo conversar con él. Y él vino y nos hicimos, instantáneamente nos hicimos amigos y nos hemos visitado. Uh, él ha venido a los Estados Unidos con toda su familia, yo he venido acá con toda uh -huh. mi familia. And, y durante todos estos años hemos visto un cambio, un cambio tremendo en Aruba. 
La gente no ha cambiado. Mm. La gente es tan gentil, tan buena, tan honorable como fueron siempre. Mm -hmm. uh, lo que ha cambiado es la estructura de Aruba. Mm. Las obras públicas que han hecho. Uh, yo me acuerdo cuando vinimos nosotros, uh, el, uh, la basura se tiraba allá en la otra parte de la isla, se tiraba en el agua mm -hmm. antes de que construyeron el, incena, el sí. incinador. Mm. Uh, Uh, y después eh, lo que sí vimos que era que el, uh, el turismo uh, se fue poniendo cada vez, vamos a decir, más pesado, uh -huh. mucho más turista, sí. mucha más gente. Uh, yo me acuerdo, íbamos a, a, antes acá a los restaurantes. En los eh, años, en todos los eh, años eso. En los años de inicio era un paraíso para ti. Era un paraíso. Exacto. Íbamos a cualquier restaurante, no había que hacer reserva ni nada. Sí. Uno iba ahí, lo atendían, sí. los, daban una de las mejores mesas. Mm. Y lo mejor de todo es que después de haber venido dos o tres años, uh, lo, lo, los que estaban en los restaurantes, en los hoteles, en, en el casino, ya nos conocían por nombre. Claro. Sí. Nos conocían por nombre. Oh, Jorge, de nuevo acá, de visita en Aruba. Y, eh, extraordinario, claro. una cosa que no pasa en otros países. Exacto. Sí, sí, sí. Sobre todo en y Estados el, Unidos. Eso, bueno, sí, en Estados sí. Unidos, ¿no? Hay sí, por, tanto, por haber tanta gente. Pero ¿no? ahora hay tanta gente sí. acá. ¿Tú sientes que hemos mejorado o tú sientes que hemos perdido algo, Jorge? Yo creo que... Uh, han mejorado muchísimo en la parte eh, de, de infraestructura. infraestructura. Sí. Eso sí, ha mejorado muchísimo. Uh, la gente no ha cambiado para nada. Mm. Siempre lo mismo. Los restaurantes están buenos como los A pesar que tenemos tantos inmigrantes, inmigrante, porque los inmigrantes, yo, yo me imagino que tú has, te has topado con muchos inmigrantes. Con muchos inmigrantes. Países como filipinos, de, colombianos, de, de, de todas partes de, 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 de Sí, están acá. Sí. ¿Tú sientes que ellos captaron la idea del ser buen anfitrión con el trato? ¿Han captado eso? Eh, sí, eh, han captado eso, pero yo no creo que se han asimilado mu mucho con la cultura uh -huh. uh, de Aruba. Sí, eh, gente... Ellos sí. se concentran con, sí. la, con, la, con sus compatriotas. Con, y, con, bueno, eso es fácil, como, como el chino en Chinatown. Sí. Sigue viviendo Sigue en China viviendo. en Chinatown. Sí. Aquí también sucede ah, sí. lo mismo. Así que esa es la única diferencia. Que, que, pudieran, que pudieran ellos aprender la cultura. Y, la cultura. Y, pero sus hijos serán. Sí, los hijos sí. sí. Los hijos ya hablan el papiamento, claro. uh, son parte de Aruba. Me imagino sí. que te, te conoces ya parte del vocabulario del papiamento. Ah, sí, yo, sí. yo entiendo, entendí perfectamente todo lo que estaba diciendo claro, el papiamento, sí. sí. Es perfecto. Entonces... Eh, vemos estos cambios y ves que realmente eh, lo más importante, lo más interesante que tú expresas es que el, el buen trato ha permanecido. El buen trato, sí. El buen trato ha permanecido. ¿Has visitado otras partes en el Caribe? Ah, ah, varios años atrás, ah, cuando mi señora eh, estaba todavía ah, viva, ah, Aruba estaba cambiando tanto que dijimos, vamos a ir a Turks and Caicos. Oh, okay. mm. And, uh, porque era la Aruba de antes. Exacto. ¿no? Y después dijimos, no, 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 no. no. Aruba es el, sí. el lugar donde queremos ir. Aruba es como nuestro segundo hogar. Y Así. yo me imagino que compraste timesharing aquí o tienes Te, propiedad. Timeshare, sí. todo esto, sí. sí claro. Tenía timeshare, Casa del Mar, en Playa Linda. Así que veníamos dos veces al año. Así que, y no, Me imagino hemos, que hemos conoces hecho... a Raymond Maduro también, que es el, el, el diseñador el, el, del proyecto. Sí. Entonces, sí, sí. él ha sido un gran promotor sí. también de esto, de este turismo que hoy tenemos. Bueno, que yo compré en Casa del Mar cuando recién lo había construido. Ah, correcto. Sí, sí, sí. sí. Así que... ¿Qué crees tú como par? Yo sé que quizás te quieres reservar algo que... Pero sería muy importante de la óptica tuya como visitante, ¿qué áreas crees tú que necesitamos atender o retomar y, y colocar donde estaba? Yo me siento mejor cuando voy a un restaurante 
o a un, uh, a un negocio y hablo con una persona de Aruba, Exacto. en vez de hablar con alguien que es de otro país sudamericano. Sí. Yo me siento, estoy en casa, sí, estoy claro. con las personas que estoy quiero estar. Estoy en Aruba. Exacto. Estoy en Aruba. Sí. Parte sí. de la experiencia es conseguirte y a la gente. Y a veces uno va a un restaurante y hablan español, pero todo con sus tonadas de, de, de los distintos países. De, de, de los regiones y, y uno no encuentra ninguno que es arubiano. Sí, claro, claro. Sí, es una parte... De, eh, que eso es que tú la parte que negativa. Esa, esa es la parte que... Sale. Sí. Sí. Pero aparte de eso... Aunque, aunque es, una parte, es una parte que pasará según cambie la generación. La que, que, sí. Aunque la generación que viene ahora... Eh, Jorge, debo informarte que lo que están hablando es inglés. Ellos, los, los niños ahora hablan en inglés. En inglés, sí. sí. sí en inglés se habla acá, todo el mundo habla inglés. Sí. Tremendo, tremendo. Eh, uh -huh. Viniendo nuevamente al libro, ¿qué esperas tú? ¿Cuántas, eh, ¿Cómo va el, el libro? ¿Cuándo salió el libro? ¿Cuándo? El libro fu fue publicado a fines de septiembre. Así que en este momento yo no tengo una idea <coughs> como Perdón, ¿cómo concreta, sí. como se está distribuyendo. Yo he sí. hablado con muchos amigos, sí. uh, muchos uh, parientes que han comprado el libro, pero uh, Amazon manda un, un detalle uh, cada tres meses. Sí, una relación de sí, cómo va. Una relación de cómo va la venta. Uh, pero como este libro se empezó a vender en octubre, así que yo todavía no he recibido nada. Sí, Posiblemente exacto. cuando vuelva ahora a fin de mes me encuentro con, con algo, a, a, alguna Jaime, información Jaime, en ese sentido. Jaime me dijo que por los años que te conoce, me dice que tú eras una persona muy reservada, no tan comunicativo como lo eres hoy. ¿Es verdad? ¿Tú sientes que has cambiado en esa parte? Y de ahí, a ser una persona muy conservadora, a escribir y publicar un libro, es un, es un paso bastante grande. ¿Qué te motivó a escribir este libro? Aparte ah, ah, de, de pero, todo lo que estás contando sí. aquí. Ah, yo escribí el libro porque quería dejarle un mensaje a mis hijos, a mis nietos y también a todos los inmigrantes que van a los Estados Unidos para que se den cuenta que el país allá los ha adoptado y que ellos tienen que contribuir. Que no es solamente mucha gente va allá... Jorge, pero porque eso es válido para acá también. Lo que estás diciendo también, es válido. También, sí, también, sí, 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 aplica acá para también todo. y posiblemente también a muchos otros países claro, también. Exacto. Es que tú lo, tú, lo, tú lo expresas y realmente eso es sí. la, la esencia de ser un buen inmigrante. Es el legajo que yo le dejo a mis hijos uh -huh. y a mis nietos. Bueno, prácticamente estamos a un minuto de tiempo. ¿Qué te gustaría dejar atrás en el programa, Jorge? ¿Qué sientes tú que no cubrimos? Ah, yo creo que hemos... Bueno, la parte que no hemos cubrido es la parte de, de la información o de inteligencia, que es difícil uh, ponerlo en un libro. Uh, me imagino que has tenido que, que reescribir, has tenido que reescribir muchas veces. Las ah, cosas. sí, sí, sí. sí no, ah, eso no ah, puede salir así, me, hay que me, cambiarlo. Sí. Dos, por dos años, dos años me llevó escribir el libro. Mm -hmm. Y wow. así que escribía un capítulo y después lo pensaba y digo, no, hay que cambiar algo y lo cambiaba. Y e, e, escribía ese libro cinco o seis veces. ¿Cuánto tiempo te tomó escribir? Eso? Dos años. Dos años. Wow. Dos años. Para publicarlo sí. fue mucho más difícil. Sí. Me llevó como tres años. Wow. Es un proyecto que ya lleva cinco sí. años. Bueno, Jorge, estamos ya fuera de tiempo. Quiero darte las gracias por haber estado en Alcazo. Para mí nuevamente ha sido un placer haber conversado contigo y haber conocido un poco de tu vida. Y, y realmente va a ser muy interesante leer este bueno, libro. Yo uh, aprecio mucho su interés en conocer el contenido del libro y haberme invitado a participar en esta Muchas discusión. gracias, Jorge. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Eh, bueno. Espero poderte tener nuevamente en el programa. 
Con mucho gusto. Si la vida nos da, nos permite. Encantado. Un placer. Tú eres Ana Caspo, un tal un placer para no estar la verdad con el doctor Jorge E. H. de Napoli. En verdad me está animado a subir a Amazon, busca el book aquí y conocer realmente el legacy, el legado de una persona que vive una vida así interesante. De manera es un de doctor Jorge. El seguro está otro team, tú su ups and downs, pero en general a cubre hobby país tan y a ha si trabajan así na importante y especial pe mundo aquí. Thank you pa mira, thank you pa escucha y nos invitamos pa otro programa de al caso de otra oportunidad, de otro viaje. Dios quiere.